tradition is said to be a guide and not a killer or destroyer. But this doesn't seem to be so in the case of Arekurumi of Ijai, a very powerful warlord, the Yoruba warrior that lost his five sons in one single day. The story of Kurumi is one that draws tears from the eyes of people who feel pity for a man who stood firm for tradition. There was once a time in the history of the Yoruba people where the heir to the throne is killed whenever the king dies. This tradition came about because it was discovered that a lot of princes killed their fathers so they could ascend the throne and become king instead. It was believed that if the heirs were killed alongside their fathers, kings would live longer on the throne. During this period, Alafi Atiba was the paramount ruler of the Oyo Empire and he appointed Kurumi, the son of Isili, as the Are Onokakanfo. As it was with tradition, a king and an Are Onokakanfo cannot stay in the same town because of their similar powers. Hence, Kurumi was assigned to Ijai where he was given the power to lord over. One day, Alafi Atiba summoned the kings and the lords of the neighboring towns and told them that he wished to change traditions. Present at the meeting were kings like the Timi of Ede, Balogu Ibikule of Ibado, and Kurumi himself. When they were seated, Atiba came down from his throne and held the sword of Ogu, the Yoruba god of iron in his right hand, and the bolt of Shogo, the Yoruba god of lightning and thunder in his left. He charged the royalties present to swear by the sword and bolt that after his death, his son Aremo Adelu will be made king. Kurumi disagreed immediately and he reminded Alafi Atiba that according to the tradition, the moment Atiba dies, his son Adelu must follow. Other royalties tried to persuade Kurumi, but he was adamant. When he could not convince them, he walked out in anger and headed for Ijai. The other kings and chiefs went home to their people to inform them of the latest development. When Baloku Ibikule of Ibadan told his chief the news, one of the chief Basharu Ogumola took the matter of up and suggested that they wage war against Kurumi. Kurumi had once captured Ogumola, who had a secret affair with his wife. He captured him, tied him to a stake like a goat, and fed him ashes as food. As a form of revenge, Ogumola proposed war against Kurumi. Alafi Atiba sent emissaries to Kurumi to change his mind, but he remained adamant. And when Alafi saw that he would not change his mind, he sent two calabash bow to Kurumi. One of the calabashes contained an effigy of a pair of two twin, Yoruba symbol of peace, while the other calabash contained gunpowder, Yoruba symbol of war. Kurumi immediately chose war and sent the emissaries back to Atiba. Immediately, Kurumi summoned his chief warrior, Balogun Ogun Koroju, and told him to prepare for the war. As part of the preparations for war, Kurumi consulted the oracle and the oracle warned him not to go to war with Ibadan because he would lose the war. Kurumi was not going to have any of it and he pestered the oracle to tell him what to do to win the war. The oracle then told Kurumi that in order for him not to lose the war, he must not cross the river Oshi, which was the boundary between Ijai and Ibadan. Kurumi agreed and went ahead to plan for the war against Ibadan. While Kurumi was making preparations, the Ibadan warriors led by Ogumola went to meet the people of Egba who were said to possess very powerful charms. The Egba people then prepared a potent charm called Adi, a charm that causes someone or a group of people to ignore warnings or dare something that will harm them. The Adi was set out to the river Oshi so that Ijai warriors would be tempted to cross the river. When the war came, Kurumi sent his five sons to fight the Ibadan people. During the first off, Ijai warriors soundly defeated the Ibadan warriors and the remaining Ibadan warriors fled back crossing the river Oshi. Unfortunately for Kurumi, his warriors felt the potency of the AD and they crossed the river Oshi. Believing that they had momentum and that they could chase the Ibadan soldiers far away, immediately they crossed the river. Their charms failed them and they were killed in thousands by the warriors of Ibadan who had set a trap for them. Kurumi suffered heavy losses and lost all his five sons in the war. Basharu Ogumola mocked him and sent a message to 
to him that it was coming for his head. On hearing the news of the death of his son and his men, Kurumi became very devastated and suicidal. But while he grieved, he held on to his belief that tradition remains tradition and that it does not regret standing firm in the face of corruption. Kurumi committed suicide by taking poison and he was thrown into the river Oshie according to his wishes so that Basharu Ogumola would not have the luxury of cutting his head and hanging it in shame. And this was the end of a man that stood firmly for tradition. What do you think about the story of Kurumi? And again, I would like you to put that in the comment section. And until the next time, stay hopeful.